Two-term vice president, former presidential candidate, now Academy Award nominee. Will he ever give up? The Democratic leadership is begging him not to, but Tim Dickinson of Rolling Stone magazine says Al Gore could be the man. He wrote the article Run, Al Run, in this month's issue. He joins us now with his best pitch. Tim, thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. Um, I, with Al Gore, you get the impression, I know that he is very popular among Democrats, but you get the impression that he's popular precisely because they don't expect him to run, and therefore he's not a threat. Do you think they'd still like him if he actually declared his intention to run? I, I think so very much. I mean, you have two superstar candidates uh, who each have a fatal flaw right now. You've got Barack Obama, who's so appealing, but he's got essentially zero experience. And then you've got Hillary Clinton, who has alienated herself from the base of the party because of her... Uh, support middling stance on this war that seems to be veering off into John Kerry-like contortions as, as we speak. And so uh, people are looking around for someone of substance and experience and somebody who's got that superstar quality. Uh, and more than anything, they're looking for somebody who's electable. And it's hard to beat somebody who uh, you know, has, has a popular vote win under his belt already. Yeah, but that, that'll be eight years by the time of the election. And I, I, I just, I'm struck by how profoundly the Democratic establishment dislikes Al Gore. I'm sure you talked to some of the former Clinton people, the Bill Clinton people, and they just have complete contempt for Gore. Bill Clinton himself, I don't think, has talked to Gore literally in years, considers him politically inept. If he's so good at politics, why do they think he's so bad at politics? Well, no, there's no question that Al Gore traditionally has been quite bad at politics. And one of the, the biggest critiques that people will tell you is that he allowed himself to be manhandled by his, uh, his handlers in, in the 2000 campaign. But the, the Al Gore that we've seen over the past few years, the Al Gore uh, who just recently uh, sold out the Taco Bell Arena in Boise, Idaho, a 10,000-seat arena faster than Elton John did, is, is a superstar. I mean, this guy, he's going to be an Oscar winner before all is said and done. And so he's really rehabilitated his public image. And you have a lot of, um, a, a lot of consultant people who really blame Gore for blowing it in 2000. But I think among the, among the people, which the, you have this very clear uh, perception that Gore was robbed instead of uh, having blown it, robbed by the Supreme Court, a partisan Supreme Court. You, you've got this fascinating statistic in your piece in Rolling Stone. You said that in an online poll of 14,000 activists held last month by the Daily Coast website, left-wing website, 60% voted for Gore. By comparison, Hillary Clinton received 292 votes total. That, that's amazing. Is there, does, that, does that signify affection for Gore or hostility toward Hillary or both? It's both things. But the, the affection for Gore on the, on the side of the net roots, which really are the... You know, you can talk about them being in their pajamas, but they raise millions of dollars, and they're the people who get yes, out and get true. excited, um, just like the talk radio audience is for the right-wing base. And so, if you don't have these people in your corner, you have a hard time winning the nomination. But wait, the, Howard. Wait, but hold on. Howard Dean had them. He was the first candidate in history to have them. The first candidate to raise all that money online. He was where Al Gore is now. He was the hero of the kind of committed blogger left, and he got stomped. But you're, but you're forgetting that Al Gore has shored up his, his bona fides with net roots people, with the move-ons. But he's still Al Gore. He's still that centrist lockbox guy who, was, uh, you know, who, who actually didn't win the 2000 election because he had alienated the left-wing base uh, and let them slip off to Ralph Nader. Hmm. Interesting. What, do you think, I mean, Gore at this point, I believe he's on the board or at least a very uh, heavy-duty shareholder in Google, so right, he's a right. frillionaire, basically. Right. Um, and he seems one, to, one of the side benefits of being right about the Internet. Right, I guess, or, you know, I think it's a little odd, actually, a guy who's been in public life all his life gets out of office and immediately gets handed hundreds of millions of dollars. It's a little weird, but anyway, it happened. He's rich now. He's obviously sure. having a good time being Mr. Movie Maker guy. Why would he, does he want to run? Why would he want to run? I'm, Al, Al Gore's been running for president since 1988. I mean, this guy, this is, yeah. the, this is the brass ring he's been chasing all his life. So uh, why wouldn't he run? I mean, certainly he's got, you know, he's got a great life. He can have an impact on the, on the public dialogue. Um, but a lot of that right now is predicated on this will he, won't he tension about his presidential ambitions. And so if he rules himself out as a presidential candidate to some of the excitement die away, uh, you know, and I think if you're Al Gore and you believe, as he does, that there's a 10-year window to, uh, to deal with these issues of global warming, there's no way to make sure that those vital decisions happen than to be the decider, than to be the president of the United States. Ha has, he, has he hired anybody? Is he, is he getting his act together internally to actually oh, there, make a run? There, I mean, 
it's, it's a combination of things. Certainly um, one of his key advisors is handling the communications for his uh, different kind of campaign, which he's running around global warming. Um, but, you know, he's out on the road packing a 10,000-seat house, training activists, gathering a million postcards, online postcards to send to Congress to, to lobby on the issues of global warming. And those are a million email addresses he's going to be able to, to, to send out a, a fundraising appeal to the, the day he decides to, uh, to throw his hat in the ring. I mean, it, it's... He's he's laying, he's left the door wide wide open for himself. He's that, wearable, that, very well. That would positioned. just be this would be the most amazing year in politics in American history, probably if that happened. That would be. I'm I'm hoping for it. Tim Dickinson from Rolling Stone. Thanks a lot. Hey, thanks a lot.